Hi guys! So it's been a while, but today I want to talk about my favorite type of divination, which are tarot cards. Tarot comes from the tabletop roleplay game Pathfinder. Within the lore of Pathfinder, there's a people called the Varisians, and to them, the tarot cards are very <clears throat> culturally significant and magically significant items, often passed down through families very big deals. Uh, I got mine in a game store where they sell dice and rule books and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just really glad they actually started making physical hero decks that you can get that are like the ones within the lore of the game. It's really cool to me. Within a hero deck there are 54 cards. They're organized into suits and alignments. The suits coincide with the six attributes that you get on a character sheet within Pathfinder and most tabletop RPGs really. Strength, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, and charisma. Within the suits, each card has an alignment somewhere on the grid of uh, lawful to chaotic and good to evil. So for instance, this card here, this is a paladin. Now the hammer down here tells us that he's a card of strength, and out of these nodes around the outside, you can see that this one's lit up in the lawful good position. So this is the lawful good card of strength. So each suit has nine cards, one for each alignment. Hero reading is done in two steps. I don't always do the first step, even though it is traditional. I say traditional because remember we're talking about something from a tabletop RPG. This is not an ancient form of divination by any means. But traditionally, uh, the first step is uh, starting with a suit that corresponds to your question. So if it's a question of career or money, you'll pull out all nine intelligence cards. If it's about your health, you'll pull out all nine constitution cards. Whichever attribute corresponds to your question. So at that point, you will take those nine cards and out of them, draw one. And that is your roll card. The roll card represents your place in the situation that you're reading about. Your role. Uh, so you look at that card, interpret it, remember it, and put all those cards back in the full deck of 54 cards. After that, you'll do the spread. Usually I just skip right toward the spread. I find the roll card unnecessary. But you can do it either way. So usually in a Harrow reading, you will put down nine cards, but you may not end up interpreting all of them. Only ones that show up in specific spaces and have a significance, and we're gonna call those focus cards. Cards go down in a three by three grid to mimic the three by three grid that shows the alignments. We have lawful to chaotic, and good to evil. Each of those spaces has a significance. Generally, you have your past, present, future, and uh, you know your good things, things working in your favor, things working against you. Kind of set up. So your nine cards are down, and you can see what card is in what position for past to future, good to bad. Like I said, you may not actually end up interpreting all of these cards. We're going to find the focus cards by seeing how the individual card alignments match up to the alignments of the spread as a whole. So in this spread, the paladin is a true match. Remember, he is a lawful good card in the lawful good position in the spread. This is a focus card and is called a true match. The desert is a chaotic good card, but he is here in a lawful evil position. He's lit up here, but is way down here. It's an opposite match, and that's important. He's also a focus card. The Wanderer is what is called misaligned. He's a good card, but in an evil position. You'll interpret his card accordingly. You'll interpret it in a, in a bad way in 
a way that is negative to the situation. So he's going to be a focus card. Uh, the betrayal up here is an evil card in a good position. While normally a negative card, you will interpret this in a good light, twist it around to see how it works for the good of the situation. So another focus card. Misaligned only counts on the good to evil spectrum, not lawful to chaotic. Even though the Rakshasa down here, see he's uh, lawful evil, even though he is a lawful card in a chaotic position, he's not misaligned, it doesn't count. You just read him normally. Neutral cards or cards that are in neutral positions are never misaligned. They're just read as they are. So you may choose to only read those four focus cards of the Paladin, the Desert, the Wanderer, and the Betrayal. If you, if you drew a roll card, you would also read wherever the roll card showed up in the spread. Uh, and that's fine. You can read just those focus cards. You can read more. Maybe a certain card stands out to you. Maybe you're really interested in why the marriage is there or the midwife. If you want to read every single card, you can. It's just that you are not required to, and those that are focus cards should be given special attention. Those are your big indicators in the reading. So that's how a harrowing works. Of course, you can do all sorts of uh, variations on it. Sometimes I'll just do a three card spread. Sometimes I'll do a one card spread. I'll change what the columns mean. Generally, I'll keep the good, neutral, evil, but I may change past, present, and future to something entirely different. Um, you can read for groups with Harrow. It's intended to be read in a group uh, by a DM. You do multiple roll cards, one for each player in the player party. I love Harrow. I connect with this so much better than I have ever have with Tarot or with Runes or any other divination system I have tried. I absolutely can get into this. I feel like I can know the cards and their characters. Um, in addition to the little white book that comes with it, there is a playable campaign within Pathfinder where the party gets sucked into the Harrow deck. It's, uh, it's great because you get to meet the cards, most of them anyway. You interact with the Paladin, you interact with the Rakshasa, with the Wanderer, all of them, and it's very fun. And so you get more of a feel for their personalities and their characters, and you there's just more information about them. Like, for instance, in the campaign, you find out that the Paladin is actually named Algon, the Everseeking, and he is sworn to fight Zastrian, the Tyrant Dragon. There he is. And so you can, when the, both of those cards show up in a spread together, you know how those two characters interact. So it's real fun to look at the campaign in addition for help interpreting things. I absolutely love it. Uh, I would love to work with these characters more as archetypes and other like aspects of my craft, doing like spell work or archetype spirits, card imagery, something like that, because I love it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like it if you did. If you want to see more from me, don't forget to subscribe. Tell me if you read Harrow. I would love to talk to the people who actually use the system. Or if there's some other cool pop culture divination system you use. Tell me about it. Find me on Facebook or on Tumblr. Those links are in the description. Uh, make a video response. Do it. I'd love to see it. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you soon.